this being my first Sunday preaching at Old Stone in a long time, I figured this was the perfect time to give a hellfire and brimstone Bible-thumping sermon. Just kidding. Actually, we need only watch the news and look at the world around us to see that we're doing a bang-up job of making here and now a living hell for one another. God never intended this, or even intended an eternal hell. God intended for humanity and creation to live in perfect harmony. Our scripture lessons this morning couldn't be timelier. Psalm 148 is the reality for creation God intends. And Matthew's gospel lesson is a warning for our current time. Our children and the children of the world are being slaughtered on our very streets. For there are many a Herod and Caesar alive and well in this world today. Now after they had left, and an angel of the Lord appeared to Hosea in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Canada, and remain there until I tell you, for ice is about to search for you and the child to destroy you. Then Jose got up, took the child and his mother by night, and they went to Canada. Refugee children and adults die seeking a better life in our country and into the countries of Europe fleeing violence and corruption as our refugee savior and his parents did so long ago. Young and old alike die daily in our communities from opioid addiction. Lesbian and gay teens commit suicide in alarming numbers due to family rejection, bullying, and the hate-filled rhetoric of so-called people of faith and nations and our national leaders at times. Transgendered men and women are beaten at times to death on our streets in Cleveland and in Lakewood and throughout the world. Mass shootings at schools, malls, and places of business continue to plague our nation. Is it any wonder that liturgically on this weekend we observe the Feast of the Holy Innocents, the massacre of the children that the Gospel of Matthew recounts? It's not history. It's our present reality. The Christmas season is about holding in one hand the state of the world as it is here and now. Oftentimes, and for many, a living hell. And in the other hand, the reality of the world as it shall be fulfilled through Jesus Christ. That babe born in a manger in Bethlehem. That reality, beautifully depicted in Psalm 148, much like the image of what I picture the Garden of Eden to have been, it isn't a fantasy. It is rooted in the basis of our faith and the roots of our faith, that that is the reality that Christ came, was born, lived, and died for. That is the reality that is unfolding even now in our midst 
as we live our faith in Jesus Christ. Part of the fall from grace, so to speak, was the dulling of humanity's senses to our interconnectedness with one another and with all creation, to the spirits within nature, the angels ever round about us, guiding us in worship, guiding us in life and faith. For we in all creation were brought in, into existence through the one and very living word, the Christ. And all of existence has a life spirit, an awareness of the oneness of all and of our creator. We may have forgotten that due to the fall, but trust me, nature round about us has never forgotten. It seems that oftentimes the version of Christianity that we have been handed down through in Western culture has wheeled its heavy hand all over the world and tried to make sure that we never remember our true nature. For Western Christianity is complicit in creating a humanity and societies that abuse power, power over others, and brutalizes our creation. Rather than using it to restore the equity and oneness of all humanity with creation, Unfortunately, Western Christianity has also birthed the spirituality of the holy me, personal salvation, and spirituality above all, and a spirituality of favor and of wealth. Yet in true relationship, there can only ever be a holy we, and that was made most evident in how God has manifested for us in the Holy Trinity. There cannot be salvation merely for individuals or even merely for humanity. For salvation through the one who created us is not only for humanity but for creation itself. As Paul writes in Romans chapter 8. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit. giving voice and consciousness to creation, we can't just write it off as a metaphor. It's the reality of how God has manifested creation. There are Christian spiritualities that celebrate this, echoing Psalm 148, Celtic Christianity is steeped in the reality of God's living presence in and through all creation and all humanity. Celtic Christianity is much more akin to our brothers and sisters in the Eastern Orthodox Christian Church. Born amidst the early Middle Ages, 
with the sharing of the good news of Christianity with the Celtic peoples who worshiped God in and through nature, there is much that we can learn from the Celtic spirituality today. And I must say, J. Philip Newell, John O'Donohue, and Matthew Fox were my saving grace in seminary. Likewise, the spirituality of Semitic cultures, such as the Jews, had an Eastern worldview, a greater sense of the interconnectedness of humanity, creation, and God. When I came to Old Stone from seminary and walked into our chapel for the first time, I was filled with joy and with peace, seeing that Psalm 148 is vividly interpreted in the, in the design of the stained glass window. If you haven't noticed that, take time to spend time in that chapel and see that, that all of what I read in the Psalm 148 is pictorially done in the glass. I knew I was home. Listen once again to its beautiful words and allow yourself to see these images in your own mind's eye and to welcome the creation that is unfolding in our midst through our faith in Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise God from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise God, all you angels. Praise God, all you heavenly hosts. Praise God, sun and moon. Praise God, all you shining stars. Praise God, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God commanded and they were created. God established them forever and ever and gave a decree which shall not pass away. Praise God, all the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling God's word, you mountains and all you hills, you fruit trees and all you cedars, you wild animals and all tame animals, you creeping things and flying birds. Let the rulers of the earth and all peoples and all judges of the earth, young men too and maidens, old women and men, praise the name of God, whose name alone is exalted, whose majesty is above earth and heaven, and who has raised the fortunes of the people Be this God praised by all the faithful ones, by the children of Israel, the people close to God. Alleluia. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we cannot continue to allow the Herods and Caesars of our day to ravage creation and humanity through policy and prejudice. Creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For us, the children of God. To live into our calling, of our faith, of our spreading the good news of the gospel. For us to participate in the healing of humanity and creation as co-creators with God through Jesus, our Christ. We are to care for one another and creation. We must listen to one another. We must listen for the voice of God in our midst. For not only we, but all of creation lift their voices to praise our God and await the fullness of God's kingdom. Amen.
Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to subscribe to get the latest and greatest videos from the Old Stone Church. And if you feel blessed by our message, please go to the oldstonechurch.org and click donate. God bless you today and forever. The Old Stone Church. We've been loving Christ and serving city since 1820.